Okay, today's discussion is measuring the outcome that you seek. So I'm gonna start with this quote by Peter Drucker. And I just wanna say that if you're struggling with something, you're trying to change something, you're trying to change something to get rid of something, or you're trying to change something to enable something in your system, uh, psychology, habits, relationships, uh, what have you. You need to measure it, okay? And I'm gonna show you actual data that I've collected a snapshot of, and I'm gonna do the comprehensive list uh, share with the world, you know, the data that. I just wanna start with that note from Kevin Crocker, but before I show the data, I just wanna really encourage anyone watching this to read this blog post by an entrepreneur by the name of Sammy Inkinen. Let this out. eight or nine years ago, I think. I could be wrong. And I really encourage you to understand what, he, what the author is saying here, who I never met and don't know. And just keep it simple, but keep your eye on the outcome that you seek and uh, be kind to yourself and measure it in a positive way. That's my take on, but you gotta read the framework because I'm not even close to doing the synthesis of the blog post. So I want to show you some of my actual data going back to, I started shifting away from uh, local spreadsheets to Google, uh, because it's just better functionality, I would, I would think. But this was my morning routine. It started November 9, 2019 timeframe. And the three things you got to focus on are being honest with regards to logging the data, you must log it honestly. Um, secondly, you must synthesize the data in some format with simple formulas or complex formulas if you can handle that. And then you must roll up that synthesis into a visual format. This is really key, all these steps that I mentioned. Because getting the visual into the data set will allow you to put a pulse on or you want to manage, all right? That being said, this is what my data looks like over the course of the following years. As you can see, there were more no's than yeses, and there were less stuff completed, and a lot of stuff was not completed. But the picture started changing the following year. So now I have half of the, the items in this category and the other half is in the not done category. I'm still not doing it in the morning. Even if I missed one of these things and I couldn't do it in the morning, I would categorize the whole thing as a no. Like I said, you gotta be honest with yourself, try to change something. Then it started improving a little bit. Uh, I went from 2.5% to almost 30%. And I started getting a lot of yeses versus no's. I added some more categories with regards to confidence building. Uh, I did that towards the end of the year, so there's not a lot of data for that. But another thing I did was get another visual into the data and try to figure out with regards to the time I was spending on the activities. What, what was the time I was spending on those activities? And this was a really good visual. All these are good visuals, but this one I really like in particular because I can just kind of get a sense of what I was doing related to these activities last year. And as you can see, I added relaxing here, but it was not till like the summer or spring that I started sitting outside again. I, I do that every year. And more on some days versus others. So. You can keep a like a pad, like a paper pencil thing with you on the side and jot down the numbers because you may not have the spreadsheet with you all the time or just put them on your phone and then, or you, you can update your spreadsheet to your phone as well. There's a lot of different ways. Um, yeah, so this is what happened and now this is my data for uh, this year, right? So I want to see a lot more green here. So far, 
Well, I haven't updated the data. It was in the history, but uh, this is what's happening. Okay, now uh, some serious stuff. Uh, I have been a huge advocate of mental health with many years in uh, working with mental health practitioners, sticking with it, not missing my session. And I will continue being an advocate of accessible uh, evidence-based practice. Uh, so one of the things I was struggling with was procrastination. And it was, without going into the details, I think there's a, not, and not as an excuse, I think there's a correlation of mental health and uh, procrastination, uh, maybe an avoidance mentality, maybe a coping mechanism that may not be healthy. And uh, I don't want to get into details or some personal details here, which obviously I don't want to share with the world. But as you can see, the numbers indicate that there was something not so, uh, there was something going on for sure. And uh, I just started measuring this. And this was 2020. This this was then the data last year. It wasn't as chronic as like the crazy numbers from the year before. Uh, but it, it, there's definitely a correlation with working uh, the, 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 the therapy side of things. And uh, I can. I, I, I had a lot of breakthroughs uh, on the mental health side of things, and I'm not going to and if I'm me, but I had to phase out the deeper sessions, or they call the stretch assignments, over a longer period of time. So November last year uh, was like I would think one of the finals. Like I don't know how psychology works. Maybe there's many more stretches. Who knows? But I feel something shifted around November last year. And, uh, this was like the bulk of the work. Uh, 2019 as well. And then it's like, like this. I don't know how you want to make that graph. Or, uh, I can talk about that and like memories and the impact memories have on psyche and behavior. Cognition overall. But yeah, so like something shifted, started shifting because of many years of work. This was just not two or two years. It's like I mean, my journey started 20, a while ago, eight, eight, eight years ago. Uh, it started and it's still going. And uh, this is what the graph's looking like this year. And I'm not showing this to show off or anything. I can walk here. I don't know what happened that day. I can go, always go back to my notes and take a look at it, which I'm not going to share with the world. But uh, almost a decade's worth of work to try to get this tamed, if I may. And, uh, yeah, so. Yeah, this is personal stuff. I wish I didn't. Uh, I don't want to record this again. But um, I find I became a little bit irresponsible uh, in the course of the years or decades. And just gotta keep it simple, man. You know I mean? don't measure the negative outcome. Measure the positive outcome. So that's what I'm doing. I don't have a lot of data be able to share here or graphs or anything like that. And so it's not just one dynamic, right? You gotta do the rituals grounded in different, different things for different folks. I think all of these are key, but this may not be applicable for somebody or, or people relax in different ways. But I, I would say this is key. These four are keys in terms of nourishment. Uh, the course on Success Academy, and we're also talking about this, the morning nourishment. And uh, I'm pretty sure a lot of other people have spoken about this, including Robin Sharma, Jack Canfield, Brian Tracy, uh, 
Uh, Sam Walton, I've heard him say that the first three hours of your day are pivotal and you got to really focus on how you spend that time. Yeah, I'll say I like these are the four areas, but anyways, I don't want to get into the detail. What I'm trying to share with anyone who may be watching this is, and I think I made a similar video uh, back in the back five years ago. Uh, so this is just a, I guess, an update on the very video I made. This is not the only video I made about this. I remember sitting in the library or the community center. I was talking about chunking. That's the one. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. I remember that. Uh, it's, it, it had the wall in the background. Um, so I was talking about chunking. And so there were a couple of related content. But really, if you're trying to manage something, you got to measure it. There's no way around it. I don't think so. So I really hope that some of the folks I may be interacting with right now or uh, haven't interacted with in the past are able to watch this. Uh, I'll send the link to some of the folks actually. It's not directed at anyone in particular. I just uh, feel uh, people, individuals get stuck in loops. And uh, I would say one of the things, if I may draw it here, is to bring something in your conscious, uh, S-C-O-S-C-I. I think I'm uh, typing this right. Uh, I don't want to have that. Uh, the stuff in the background is doesn't really. I just wanted to be able to write this. Uh, uh, so you got to first bring the stuff into your conscious awareness. And sometimes it takes measurement in order to be able to do that because you spot patterns and correlations. And I'm not gonna show the other system I built, which I don't even make use of right now, but Computerman really helped me bring conscious awareness. But it was really simple, date, time, log, and then you kind of review it at some frequency and then you start seeing patterns. And one of the patterns I disrupted in the past is uh, Netflix and popcorn. And I would access really matters too. If you have like a lot of access to junk food, whatever, you're just going to eat it. There's no way around it. So that also applies to the people you spend time with, their thoughts, beliefs, habits, you know, the product of the five people you spend time with. But yeah, so these are all connected topics. Uh, right now, I just want to keep it simple. If you're trying to change something, you got to measure it. And so watch the other two videos I made on this topic as well. Managing your psychology, managing the effort, video for chunking, maybe if you're an entrepreneur of tips, you know, chunking right here, watch the video on mental health. And I would share something. I feel that folks like Sammy Inkinen are much better role models. <laughs> Actually, no, I shouldn't say that. Why, why would I say that? Anyways, take what you can based on what you are watching. So I think even if one individual watches this video, it might work. This would be a time well spent, absolutely. But uh, take a look at this blog post, and I want to share this snapshot, which I feel is pretty crazy in a good way. So I don't know Brian Johnson personally. Again, never met him. Communicated with him. So he's the founder of uh, one of the brain machine interfaces companies. And take a look at this video from one year and take a look at his morning routine now uh, or from last year. I feel his transformation is incredible. Incredible transformation. And that's all I got to say. So I think he's taken measurement to a totally next level, right? Uh, I would say like to a total exponential different level. I'm not at that level. I, I don't know if I want to be at that level and that's not a diss or a, a negative comment. Um, but I do 
that one have that structure that I showed. There's a lot of automation. Um, there's other data too that I collect with the way the Krishna will take sleep. I have a log for sleep pattern because my sleep, I need to watch it. I need to watch this. I'm drinking more coffee now. So I know, I know it, once I'm hitting that, uh, that threshold, I might kind of catch myself, right? The other logs, we will rush through my response to certain things. I have logs for healing certain relationships, a lot of the same time maintaining that there, like that, uh, the boundary, which has nothing to do with all of this. Uh, I just want to show this is probably the most insane morning routine that I've ever seen in a really good way. Like, I just feel the transformation within a couple of years has been incredible. So, definitely check out these resources. So, that's it. Um, measure the outcome that you seek. Be kind to yourself and don't beat yourself up. Uh, having an accountability buddy can be really useful. I did that for a little bit last year or the year before, and I was seeing a lot of things, a lot of product, productivity gains. And that was for fitness. So, you can have it for anything. Right. Uh, you can also apply to struggles. I was reading a book by Frank Odia, who is a Canadian entrepreneur and had problems with alcohol uh, when he was a teenager and into his adult life. And then he was on a path towards forming himself, changing himself. And he, yeah, so you got to read the book uh, by Odia. Yeah, but uh, he had an accountability partner at some point, which was very beneficial. Anyways, I gotta cut this short. I gotta, I gotta prep for a meeting. Thank you for watching. If you have any tips, find me on LinkedIn because I want to keep this video open for kids.